Hello everybody, this is Paul from Off Grid Desert Farming News with Paul and Adrian. This is October the 1st, 2024. I want to welcome you to our broadcast today. If this is your first time here, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you will not miss any of our breaking news. So we want to start off with this broadcast um, giving you some very, very dire news about the aftermath of Hurricane Helene. We have uh, eyewitness reports now that the government is lying to you, the news media is lying to you about the grave situation that has developed or is developing in the Asheville area and other heavily hit parts of Florida where the devastation was catastrophic. What we are dealing with, folks, is a disaster in the making that this situation is going downhill very fast, and we're going to break it all down for you today on October the 1st, 2024. If you have been studying anything about the end times, if you've been listening to prepper channels and survival channels for the last 10 or 15 years, this scenario that we will be discussing today is exactly the scenario that we have been giving you for the last uh, many years. That when disaster strikes, it happens suddenly, and you find yourself in a world that um, things are out of control. You have no control over the situation. Once the electricity goes out, your entire world changes. You are in the dark. If you don't have any cell phone service, if you don't have any internet service, if the roads are cut off, if the area around you is a total disaster, then you are living in an apocalyptic situation. And it does seem like the worst of it is in the Asheville, North Carolina area. That entire area, North Carolina, Tennessee, all of the smaller towns and villages in that area. We're not just talking about Asheville. We're talking about the surrounding communities that they are not even discussing. That entire cities and towns have been washed completely away. Now, the U.S. government is going to cover this situation up. Just like what happened in Katrina, they said 1,600 people died in Katrina. Folks, it was in the tens of thousands. When we lived in Florida, there was a hurricane called Hurricane Andrew. Hurricane Andrew was a Category 5 hurricane that hit South Florida in the Homestead area. It hit the Homestead military base. It happened about 3 o'clock in the morning down in South Florida around the Okeechobee uh, waterway, and thousands and thousands of people died. Three o'clock in the morning, entire apartment complexes were obliterated. The U.S. government and FEMA rolled in with their 18-wheeler trucks. They closed off the entire area. They set up a perimeter, and nobody came or went in that restricted area for weeks while they collected bodies, put them on refrigerated trucks and hauled them away by the thousands. What most people know, don't know is that around that area, there was large migrant camps of a lot of illegal aliens that worked in the Florida uh, uh, vegetable industry. They picked fruit, tomatoes. Uh, they worked in the fields, folks. They were pretty much indentured servants. And about five or 6,000 of these migrant workers were uh, in that area that were, has said, died. And thousands more that they hauled off. The U.S. government and FEMA is very good at covering up disasters, lying to the American public. The same thing happened in Katrina when it, Katrina happened. They went in with their 18-wheeler trucks, their refrigerated trucks. And they collected thousands of bodies. 
and they hauled them away. And people never knew what happened to those people because this is the explanation. Well, uh, you know, they moved out of the area. Um, we don't know what happened to them. We lost communication. But there was no follow-up. There was no national database. There was no no follow-up to what happened to all the people that went missing. Well, the same thing is happening in Asheville and in other areas. In parts of Florida, in Cedar Key and other small little towns and islands that got washed away from this catastrophic storm surge from Helene. Folks, there was hundreds, maybe even thousands of people that did not evacuate. They were on small islands. They could not get out. They were stranded. And if you look at the aerial photos, if you look at the drone footage from those areas, it is completely devastation. There is nothing but miles and miles of rubble, just two befores, insulation, refrigerators, cars piled up, boats piled up. It is going to be months and months and months before all of that debris is sifted through by search teams. And by that time, if there is anybody alive under that debris, they will be dead, long dead. So the situation in Asheville is a dire situation right now. They are completely cut off. The roads in and out have been destroyed by the floodwaters. Multiple dams broke, multiple levees. The water was so intense that it washed homes off of their foundation. It destroyed a large part of Asheville. Now, what most people don't know is Asheville was not a little town. Asheville has a population of about 90,000 or 95,000 people. That is a very big city. 95 thousand people. Most of the city was flooded. Where are those 95,000? I mean, a few days ago, they said a thousand are missing, more than a thousand. This was admitted, and we showed you that news report from major news uh, stations, that at least a thousand are missing. Now they got it down to 600. Now, probably today, they'll put it down to maybe a hundred's missing. But they're lying to you, folks. I'm telling you, the authorities that are in charge are lying through their teeth. We could see a death toll in the tens of thousands, folks. We really don't know. But I am sure it's going to be in the thousands. And they'll never tell you how many people actually perished. Because what happens is people said, well, you know, our neighbors, we don't know what happened to them. There's really no database for relatives to call in and report on this. There's nobody collecting the information. And if they did, the government would come in and, and shut it down because they don't want the true total of what happened or what is happening right now. What Joe Biden should have done was activate FEMA immediately and activated the U.S. military and all of its resources that we have to send $8 billion to Ukraine or $8 billion to Israel or $200 billion to Ukraine, activate the U.S. military, get in hundreds of helicopters, private helicopters, Black Hawk, Chinooks, land in Asheville. You can still get a helicopter into Asheville. Land in the city. Evacuate people to an area a staging area where they can get food, water, and shelter, and a cell phone so they can contact their relatives. You could send in four to 500 Chinook helicopters and Blackhawks and other evacuation helicopters into Asheville. You could land them, collect the people, instead of trying to feed them there, take care of them there where there's no roads coming in and out. Evacuate them out, folks. We have the biggest U.S. military in the entire world. We spend over $870 billion on our defense budget. Yet when a disaster happens in our country, we fail to even protect and rescue our own people. Folks, this is just one town in our country. What is going to happen if there is a massive disaster that affects entire regions, 
what's going to happen if we have a cyber attack and the power grid is taken out or a limited nuclear attack? What is going to happen? You are going to be on your own. The U.S. government, your city resources is not coming to save you. You're going to be on your own. And if you have not prepared, then you're probably going to die. What is so unfortunate about this situation in Asheville, North Carolina, and, and other parts of North Carolina, small towns, is that these people never thought this was going to happen to them. This was a metropolitan city of 95,000 people. If you look at the videos, if you look at the air footage, the drone footage flying over the city at least a couple days ago, over half of the entire city was underwater. Over half of the entire city was underwater. So let's let's uh, let's think about this a minute. If there was 95,000 people that lived in Asheville and the community surrounding Asheville, Let's say that just half of those people were flooded out. That's about 40, 45,000 people. Let's say that 45,000 people, their businesses, their houses were completely flooded to the roof. They could not escape. Where are those 45,000 people? Where did they go? They couldn't get out. The roads are gone. The roads were washed out. They could not leave the area. They're in a valley, folks. Asheville is in a valley. That's why it flooded. It's not on a, on the side of a mountain. It's not on a on a hill. It's in a valley. That's why it flooded. So those people sitting in their homes, all of a sudden, the water started rising. We have reports now that hundreds of bodies, maybe even thousands, are being collected. They are washing up in rivers. In streams, they're in the, the, uh, the rubble. You have seen the drone footage where there's just a wall and miles and miles of broken homes and rubble and two befores all piled up in huge piles and there's bodies all in that. We have reports that multiple people are dead. The stench of dead bodies is everywhere. The U.S. government is lying to you. The authorities are lying to you. There's probably tens of thousands of people that perished just in Asheville area. So if 45,000 people homes were flooded and they could not escape because the roads are washed out, where are those people? I'm just saying half of the city. I'm not I'm not talking about the 95,000 people that live there. We're just talking about half. If just half of the homes were flooded. That's 45,000 people that, where are they? Where are they? But we're talking about more than half of the population. We're talking about more than half of the city that was flooded. This could be a hundred times worse than Katrina because right now there's no in and out. At least with Hurricane Katrina, there was multiple ways into New Orleans. There was multiple routes into that area. But in Asheville, there are only like two or three major roads in and out. I-40 is gone. I-29 is gone. All of the roads are gone. The only way in is helicopter. The only way into that area, maybe you could get a boat in there, maybe going down a river or something, a, a barge. But for the most part, that entire area is cut off. No power, no internet service, no cell phone service. So we don't know the fate of 95,000 people. We don't know. I mean, the videos that you're seeing is just maybe a few thousand people that have survived, that were seen, you know, where they're airdropping food. But to a large part of the city, folks, it was completely underwater. Where are the people? I mean, if you cannot get in with an 18-wheeler, if you cannot get in with 
supplies, the only way that you're going to get in is a major air operation. The airport was flooded. So the only way that can possibly help these people is a massive mobilization of the U.S. military with hundreds of Chinook helicopters, hundreds of Blackhawks, hundreds of private uh, helicopters landing on an hourly basis to evacuate these people, the ones that survived out to another area where they could receive medical care, food, and contact their relatives. That is the response the U.S. government should be doing right now. We will never know the extent of the death toll in Asheville. This is a microcosm of what is going to happen nationally in the entire United States of America. What you're seeing unfold right now is the worst case scenario. This is a microcosm of the apocalypse that you are now witnessing happening in multiple areas. At least in Florida, they can get to the area, folks. At least in Florida, you can come in by boat. There are roads to get to the coastline to these affected areas. The problem is in the North Carolina area, in those mountain regions, there's only one or two ways in and out, and those roads are washed away. Even if the Army Corps of Engineers, even if multiple construction companies started yesterday to repair the interstate, they could not get it fixed for months because the portions of it has been entirely gone. They have to wait for the water to recede. It is still flooded in Asheville. It's like a bowl, folks. It's like a bowl. It's like a hole in your yard, like a swimming pool. Once that swimming pool fills up with water, where is it going to go? Unless you pump the water out, it's got to evaporate. It could be months for the water evaporates and soaks into the ground. And you don't understand a lot of these places in North Carolina, they don't have sand like Florida, where the water just seeps right down through the soil. The ground is clay. And clay does not absorb water like sand, like Florida. So it could be weeks and possibly months before all of that water recedes in the Asheville area, before they actually can go in and collect the bodies. But what I'm saying right now is you have a humanitarian situation happening and people are dying. Uh, they're going to be getting diseases. Uh, waterborne diseases because they have no fresh water, they have no food. A lot of these areas, these people are stranded. They don't even know they're stranded because they don't have any internet service. They, there has, they have no way to communicate. So what is this telling us right now? Are you learning from the situation? We have been stressing on our channel for the last five years if you are not prepared, you are prepared to fail. If you do not take precautions, you are preparing to fail because when disaster strikes, you're going to be on your own. The government, the police, they will not come to rescue you in a dire situation. If rescue comes, it could come too late for you. If you do not have clean water, you will die early. You can live without food for a couple of weeks, but you cannot live without clean water. You can live without electricity if you have water and stored food. But what happened, even if these people in Asheville had a, uh, a seven-year supply of food in their house, well, it's gone, folks, because they lived in a valley. They lived in an area that filled up with water. There are many people in Asheville, though, that are on mountain, on the side of the mountain. They survive. We have um, a friend that lives in the Asheville area, Patriot Farms. She's on a hill, but her power is out. They don't have any power at their house. They're, they have a generator, but what happens when the gasoline runs out? What happens when you can't cook food? They can't cook food because they don't have a wood stove. You can cook it over, over firewood, folks. 
See, people don't think about that. They, they rely too much on technology. Most people, I would say 99.9% .9 of the people in the United States of America are not prepared for a disaster that just happened, just like in Asheville. They're not prepared. And then they want to call people like me and preppers and survivalists crazy because we have been preparing for 10 or 15 years. They want to call us nuts and lunatics, you hillbillies, you, you conspiracy theorists. But who is going to survive? 99% of the population in America is not prepared for anything, folks. They're not. When the power goes out, their world will come crashing down because they have no way to filter water. They have no water filters. They have no survival food. They have no rice and beans. They have no uh, uh, portable generators, most of them. They're reliant on the technology of electricity. Folks, when the roads are gone, like in Asheville, there's no supplies coming. Walmart is not coming. When dixie Albertsons. The gas trucks that fuel your vehicle are not coming because the roads are cut off. You're not going anywhere. And unless you're prepared, you're not going to survive. You may survive for a week or two. But if you do not have clean water, you will die very quickly. You can only go about three days without having any water to drink. You know, those people in Asheville, there's water all around them, but it's it's dirty. It's muddy. They can't drink it. It's not potable water. And if those families would have just invested in a $15 life straw, one of those little straws that you can actually drink water out of a toilet, or a, a muddy puddle that will filter the water and you can survive by one of these life straws. If every member of your family had a $15 life straw, they can survive. They'll have water to drink. But most people don't even have a $15 life straw, folks. They have no way to filter water. So let's get to the information, folks. This is a dire situation here. The news media is not going to tell you what is really happening. They are going to downplay this. They are going to stop reporting on this. They are going to switch to another subject. They're going to shake their little shiny bell and make you focus on something else. They want you to forget about what's happening. But this situation is only going to get worse, folks. The only way to help the people is to activate the U.S. military and send in hundreds of helicopters, nonstop, nonstop flights into Asheville, nonstop by the U.S. military, mobilize 50,000 U.S. military personnel for a special operation, get them into Asheville. Evacuate the people out now. Evacuate them out of the area, folks, until the roads can be repaired. Because if you don't have gasoline to power your cars or generators, if you don't have any way to bring in food through the road system, the only way to, to get supplies in is to airdrop those supplies by an airplane or evacuate the people out. Folks, we have the biggest military budget in the world, $870 billion. But by the time this is over, we're probably going to have thousands, possibly tens of thousands of people that will die from this situation. And they're not going to tell you, just like they didn't tell you what happened in Florida during Hurricane Andrew and other major natural disasters that the U.S. government and FEMA, they cover up. They bring in the trucks, they put the bodies in the refrigerator trucks, they haul them off, and you never hear about those people again. They cover it up, just like in Joplin, Missouri, where the when a, a tornado went through and destroyed three quarters of the town. Folks, they lied about the death toll. It was in the thousands.
the whole city was obliterated by a mile-wide tornado. They brought the FEMA trucks in, they closed the area off, they collected the bodies, and then they changed the news story. There's not very many people that are reporting this, folks. Let me show you the information we have. I want to show you some information that we just got in. And if you are living in the Asheville area, please leave a comment. If you are on the ground in North Carolina, South Carolina, please tell us what's going on. Because like I said, there's not very much information that is coming out of the area right now, folks. This is a closed off area. There's not very much information. Even if they airdrop a couple pallets of food, folks, there's 95,000 people that lived in the Asheville area. 95,000 that lived in the Asheville area. Now, some of them, like I said, lived on mountains. They lived on the side of hills. They were not affected, but they're still, they don't have any power. And unless they have dried food, they're going to be running out of food in a couple of weeks. So let's go ahead and read you this latest information that we have. I want to increase this so you can see it. Reports coming in. Western North Carolina is indescribable. A catastrophe may be way worse than Katrina. Thousands are missing. There is a total blackout, no food, no water, no cell service or radio. It is the worst hit areas. Why weren't they warned? This is what is being reported right now. A first-hand report says, my uncle Mitch knows something. He works for the EMS. They are hauling them off by the truckloads to the morgue. Please don't call me a catastrophist. This is real media, not reporting truth. So this is um, Sela Farber right here is reporting this. September the 24th, 2024, yesterday. This is what she reported. My uncle Mitch knows something who works for the EMS. They are hauling them off by the truckloads to the morgue. Are you loud? No, I'm recording. Okay. My Uncle Mitch knows something who works for the EMS. They are hauling them off by the truckloads. Please don't call me a catastrophist. So link to the tweet uh, stating thousands are missing here. We'll, we'll go back to that in a minute. This is another, uh, I guess, another Twitter tweet. Breaking news, Helene in Western North Carolina says, From my friends in Asheville. The hospital can no longer sterilize equipment. They are so many bodies in cars you cannot count. Bodies are laying everywhere. There is no aid except the rescues. 100 times more dire than Katrina. The rescue hasn't even started in most areas. Literally, Governor Roy Cooper is doing nothing, but he sent 500 reservists, zero federal help here. Last night, CNN cut off Asheville spokesman when she started to criticize the response from Roy Cooper and Biden. The death toll from Katrina was about 1,600. This will be way, way past that. There are thousands still missing. And this is a picture of, I believe, I-40 or one of the highways. It is completely washed out, folks. Completely washed out. It will be months and months before these main roads are repaired. So let me go back and read this one more time. Let me read this. This is breaking news, Helene from Gardens for Health. Uh, go to Gardens for Health, Foxy Farmer on Twitter. This is what she left. Friends from Asheville are telling me the hospitals can no longer sterilize equipment. There are so many bodies in cars that you cannot count. 
These were people, some of the 95,000 people that lived in Asheville who could not get out. They drowned in their cars, entire families. Bodies are laying everywhere. There is no aid except rescues. 100 times more dire than Katrina. The rescues has not even started in most areas, folks. In most areas of the Asheville, the little cities and villages, there isn't even anybody to rescue anybody. Literally, Governor Roy Cooper's doing nothing. He sent 500 National Reservists, and that's it. Zero federal help from Joe Biden. Last night, CNN cut off Asheville spokesman where she started to criticize a response from Roy Cooper and Biden. Death toll from Katrina was about 1,600. This will be way past that. There are thousands missing. He said they have no food, no power, no water, no internet, no cell service. They don't even have a radio. This is a completely dead zone in the United States of America. No one knows what's going on in there. This is a text from Ralph Maggie's daughter-in-law today published with permission. She said, my uncle Mitch knows something who works for the EMS or some kind of emergency rescue and they have found over 250 bodies in the French Broad River. They are hauling them by the truckloads to the morgue at the mission. So this is just one tweet, folks. She said that they found over 250 bodies alone just in one area in the French Broad River. So if you live near the French Broad River, and there is somehow that you can watch us, please leave a comment in the comment section. If you are in the Asheville area, the North Carolina area, and you have vital information, please leave your comments in the section, in the comment section. They found over 250 bodies in the French Broad River. They are hauling them by the truckloads to the morgue at the mission. This is another tweet. Whitney Gray says, call in the National Guard. There are cars. There are cars now stranded on I-40 trying to get the safety and no one knows where to go or what to do. The police have no plan or direction for the stranded people. Someone has to communicate with Asheville area and the vicinity residents are trying to get the safety. He said, folks, there is no way to sugarcoat it. The situation in Western North Carolina is becoming more dire by the hour. Residents are still without power and do not readily have access to food and water. I am urging Governor Roy Cooper to send more help immediately. We need to deploy more National Guard and surge additional search and rescue teams. This is what is happening right now. And I don't know if you can see this on the screen. Let me, uh, let me make sure we can play this. All right, so that's not, uh, I can't play the video. We'll have to see if we can find it again. Breaking news, Mike Wallace. Major TV stations across the country appear to be testing the emergency broadcast system. This happened 12 hours ago. I don't know if you've uh, seen any of that. Readers added context to, uh, they thought people might want to know. This was due to CBS feed issues between the early and late NFL games. Uh, this is from A.H. World Traveler. Thank you for sharing this. My hometown is in truly desperate need of help. I have spent many years in a variety of war-torn nations in the Middle East, and the devastation is truly catastrophic here. Hundreds of bodies. Folks, this woman is saying that she's in the area. Hundreds of bodies are now washing up in the rivers, and a young mom who couldn't get to her baby in time saw the baby wash away. Truly heartbreaking. Thank you for your prayers and for spreading the word around the nation of what is really gone here, going on in Western North Carolina. We need your help. So this woman right here, right here, A.H. World Traveler, four hours ago, she said hundreds of bodies right here. 
Hundreds of bodies are washing up in the rivers. There are hundreds dead. Probably thousands are dead, folks, and they're not going to tell you. This is from Vin Giggs on Twitter. Let's just completely ignore the government from now on. Get into the game. Help our own communities. We're heading up with a large convoy of 4 by 4s tomorrow to deliver food, water, and supplies in an attempt to reach areas cut off by washed out roads. We have friends donating their helicopters and aircraft to do the same. In many cases, flying by and dropping supplies in communities as they pass overhead. Come on, Americans, let's help each other. This is an update I just got from my lineman friend in Asheville. We, we went up to Old Fort Road. We went up to Old Fort Road where it connects to the number nine road. The whole area is gone. He said the whole area is gone. This is a lineman, an electrical worker that restores power. The whole area is gone. There is a 100-foot ravine where houses used to sit. So the area washed out 100 feet deep, folks. A 100-foot ravine where houses used to sit. So where are those houses? Kids were walking around naked asking where their parents are, people begging for water. Black Hawk helicopters from FEMA. I don't want to talk about the smell of the dead bodies. He said, I am in disbelief. It is far worse than anyone can ever imagine. Please pray for those hit by the Hurricane Helene, Asheville. So this is going on right now, folks. Not one penny to go, better go to another country until our states look like this hurricane never happened. So, folks, this is a catastrophe. This is a catastrophe still in the making. And I still can't get to that. So, all I can tell you is that right now these people that are in the Asheville area, even down in Florida and other areas in Georgia that were hit by this hurricane, we're not even talking about areas in Georgia or in Tennessee or in South Carolina. There are multiple areas, folks, that they cannot even reach. There's nobody that is reporting on those areas. We're only focusing on Asheville a town of 95,000 people that has been completely cut off from the rest of the world, that the U.S. government has is not doing anything. And I believe, but before this is over, we're going to have thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of people that are going to die. I'm sorry to say. There are probably already thousands dead that have been washed away, that drowned in their cars, drowned in their houses, were swept off the road. We have multiple reports now that hundreds of bodies, hundreds of bodies are washing up right now in different areas of Asheville, rivers. They're washing up on the shore. The smell of dead bodies, according to this Lineman is horrible. But this is happening not in a third world country, folks. This is happening in the United States of America. Not in Rwanda, not in Mexico, not in a Central American country, not in a third world country. This is happening in the most technological country in the entire world, the United States of America. A disaster happening while the U.S. government does nothing but give our billions of dollars away to Ukraine to kill more people and to Israel to kill more people while we have tens of thousands of people that could possibly die in the coming weeks while the U.S. government is not doing anything. FEMA is basically not doing anything. Joe Biden needs to mobilize 
50,000 U.S. American soldiers. There should be massive airlifts of U.S. Air Force planes coming into the area with helicopters evacuating the people out, airdropping millions of tons of supplies into these areas, putting in special forces teams to go in and rescue these people. They're doing nothing. And we will never know the fate of most of these people. Because there's other things that they're going to distract you with. Believe me, folks, in the coming weeks, there's going to be major news stories. And they're going to cover what is happening in Asheville and in Florida and in these other hard-hit areas. They're going to cover it up because they're going to switch to another news story. And most of the people in America right now will forget about what is happening in North Carolina. They're going to cover it up. They're going to smooth it over. And American people will be distracted by maybe what is happening in Ukraine or in the Middle East. Or maybe with the election. Or with the strike that is happening right now on the ports. There's multiple things happening right now in the world, folks. But I wanted to focus on Asheville. I wanted to focus on that area because this is going to end up being the, probably the worst natural disaster that has ever befallen the United States in the last 50 years. I believe that there will be tens of thousands of people that are going to die or have died already that you will never know about. If you've been watching our channel for the last week, we made a prediction on our channel before Hurricane Helene even hit. We told you that this would be a mass casualty event. We told you that possibly thousands of people could die. Go back to that video, watch it. It was the video a couple of days before Hurricane Helene even hit Florida. We predicted that this would be a mass casualty event. And that's what we're seeing unfold right now. We have multiple things also going on, folks. Let's talk about this for a few minutes and then we'll get back to Asheville. But the strike at the ports of the eastern coast of the United States is well underway right now. Let's cover this story right here. Longshoremen go on strike. 36 United States ports are now closed. 50% of all imports are not coming in right now. This is only going to exasperate the situation that the union, the port workers, they are on strike. Nothing is coming in or out of our ports in the United States since 1977, members of the International Longshoremen's Association Union are on strike for the first time since 1977, stopping operations at the east and gulf ports of the United States. The strike has been disrupted, the flow of many imports and exports potentially making it one of the most significant work stoppages in decades. Dock workers began picketing shortly after their contract expired at midnight with no agreement in sight. There is a significant gap between the union's demands and the offer from the United States Maritime Alliance, the USMX, which represents foreign-owned shipping lines, terminal operators, and port authorities. The strike is expected to block the movement of a wide range of goods through nearly all cargo ports from Maine to Texas, including everything from toys, fresh fruit to furniture, clothing, household items, and European automobiles. If Americans thought the effects of COVID on the supply chain were bad, they haven't seen anything yet. Because companies now in America use just-in-time inventory, they no longer stored large amounts of products in warehouses. As such, there isn't a large reserve of products already here in the country, just waiting to be loaded on trucks and taken to the stores. The inventory just doesn't exist. With the port workers now on strike, once those goods run out at your stores, there will be no replenishment. 
if you need it, you better get it now because there's no telling how long this strike will last or how fast the things you need will run out. This is major breaking news that the longshoreman strike now is taking place. So folks, multiple events are now happening. I wanted to try to give you a perspective on what America is facing. We have the U.S. elections happening in less than 35 days right now. Will there be an election at all? Will some other major event happen? A false flag attack to be blamed on Russia? Something major happen? Will there be an election at all? Now with this port strike, <clears throat> you're not going to get anything coming or leaving America until this strike is over. This is going to affect a large part of America if all of these supplies cannot be imported. So the situation is just getting worse. Let me go back to Asheville right now and tell you what actually happened, folks. This is some more information. Helene and other storms dumped a whopping 40 trillion gallons, 40 trillion gallons of rain on the south. More than 40 trillion gallons of rain drenched the southeast United States just in the last week from Hurricane Helene and a run-of-the-mill rainstorm that sloshed in ahead of it. The unheard amount of water that has stunned experts. That's enough to fill the Dallas Cowboys Stadium 51,000 times or Lake Tahoe just once. If it was concentrated just on the state of North Carolina, that much water would be 3.5 deep or what, more than one meter, it's enough to fill more than 60 million Olympic-sized swimming pools. So folks, 50, I'm sorry, 40 trillion gallons of rain. 40 trillion gallons of rain. An unheard of amount of rain that was dropped. And we have multiple news that there are more storms forming. We have multiple news that there are more tropical depressions that could basically impact the United States in the coming weeks. So folks, you know, you can tell me whatever you want to tell me. You can tell me that we're not in the tribulation, but we are seeing what is going to happen in a microcosm that is happening right now in North Carolina, the Asheville area, where 95,000 people that used to live there, their fate, their lives now hang in the balance. They are completely cut off from the rest of the world. They cannot get in and out only by helicopter. That is the only way. And maybe a boat. Maybe a boat can get in there, folks. I really don't know. But for the most part, they are cut off from the rest of the world. And unless the U.S. government springs into action with hundreds of helicopters and the U.S. military goes in there and evacuates these people out to a safe area, there could be thousands or tens of thousands of people that are going to perish in the coming weeks. Folks, there are areas that they have not even started to rescue. There are many little villages and towns in the Asheville area that are underwater that nobody's reporting on. So we're not going to find out. I'm telling you right now that the U.S. government will cover this information up. There's going to be a blackout. The blackout has already started. They are already starting to downgrade the death toll. They've already started to downgrade the people that are missing. 
they are covering this up just like they did in Katrina, just like they did with Hurricane Andrew in Homestead, Florida, just like they have on all major disasters that have hit the United States. They cover the information up. They lie to you. So unless you are prepared, unless you have taken the precaution to prepare you and your family, this should be a wake-up call to every American. If you live in a low-lying area in the United States, if you live in a river valley, if you live in a low-lying area, I would highly recommend you sell your house and move because your area could potentially end up like Asheville. If you live in a valley, if you live by a major river, if you live by a major water source, and your area is inundated with 30 inches of rain, you could be a victim, just like the people in Asheville. I recommend that you live in a high and dry area. If you plan on living in the mountains, you need to live up on a hill. You need to live at a higher elevation out of the valley. You don't want to live in the valley where the river, if the river floods, or you have a 30 inches of rainfall, 40 trillion gallons of water, you're going to die. Because a valley is like a bathtub. It's like a swimming pool. It fills up with water when there is a large amount of rainfall, a large amount of water. If a dam bursts, you always want to be on the highest point in your city in case there is a flood. So I hope this is a wake-up call to the millions of Americans. I wish we had millions of views so we could warn more people. I really wish that we did. I wish there were millions of views that we could warn more people of what is about to happen. Folks, if there is a major cyber attack on the United States, if our power grid goes down, if there is a, a limited nuclear attack by Russia or China on our country, we're going to see this situation play out in millions of places in America. Not just Asheville. It will be uh, all the way across our country when the power goes out. That the 18-wheelers will stop rolling. Whatever supplies that you have in your grocery stores will be gone within a matter of days. According to most reports, according to one second after, one second after the power grid goes down, within six to nine months, over 90% of the Americans living in the United States will be dead. That's over 280 million people dead within six to nine months, not from a nuclear bomb, but from starvation and people killing each other over food. That's the, that's the scenario that will happen when the power goes down. Because 99.9% .9 of Americans are not prepared. They're not. There's only about 1% of the entire population of America that are preppers or survivalists or have been getting getting their families ready for what is about to happen? Because most Americans think we're going to be raptured out. We're going to fly, brother. We're going to fly. That YouTube channel told us that we're going to fly tomorrow. They, they've they been setting dates for the last 10 years. You know, there's a Fletcher, there's a YouTube Fletcher channel that he sets a new date for the rapture. Every single day, there's a new date. We're going to fly out of here, and we're not going to have to go through no bad times in America, folks. Hallelujah. That's what most Americans think, that we're going to be raptured out. Folks, was those people in Asheville raptured out? Are they not going through their own apocalypse? Aren't they going through great tribulation right now? Aren't they living in hell right now? What is happening in that community where there's no power, no food, no water? Stranded. They weren't raptured out, will they? Are they? Were they raptured out? They're still here. 
they're living their own apocalypse. They're living their own hell right now. They weren't saved. They weren't whisked out before the flood came. What if we're not raptured out, folks? What if the rapture doesn't happen until after the tribulation, like Jesus said? If you want to know about the rapture, look at the words of Jesus. You know, all of these YouTube channels that keep predicting a rapture date, they're false prophets. They add all the numbers up. They do gematria. Oh, six plus four equals this, six, six, six. Oh, yeah, they check the tattoos on Angelina's butt. They watch Pet Goat four times a day. They try to figure it out. Then they come up with a new rapture date that never, ever, ever, ever happens. If they were right just one time, folks, we wouldn't be here. But how many viewers do they have? I've received a prophecy straight from God. He told me the direct date when the rapture is going to happen. And they'll tell you that. They'll come on TV. God gave me a vision. It's going to happen tomorrow at 4 o'clock. And what happens? Nothing. And then they'll get another vision. God gave me another vision. He updated the rapture date. It's going to happen next week at 4 o'clock. And then guess what happens? Nothing. Because they're false prophets. They're lying to you. The Bible clearly states no man knows the day or hour. But yet you'll have them put out a video and they'll have 50,000 views on the video because God told them the rapture date. God must be a prolific liar. God must be a, a habitual liar because every date that they told them is wrong. God doesn't lie, folks. These people are making all of us S-H-I-T up. They're making it up. They're lying to you. All of these so-called internet prophets, they're lying to you through their teeth. God didn't tell them that. They're false prophets. If they were a true prophet, they, their first prediction of a rapture would have happened years ago. But yet, that doesn't stop thousands of people from going to their channel every day looking for a new rapture date. We're going to fly, folks. We're going to fly. We don't have to worry about none of this because we're going to fly. Hallelujah. We're still here, aren't we? On the verge of a nuclear war with Russia, the Middle East going up in flames, we're still here, aren't we? And we're probably going to be here for most of the bad crap. Those that fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Those that fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Most people are interested in buying the biggest house that they can do, the nicest brand new car, brand new furniture, designer clothes for their children, but they don't think anything about any kind of disasters because we're going to be raptured out, boy. God's going to save us from all this mess. We're still here, aren't we? Was the people in Homestead, Florida raptured out? Were the people in Cedar Key? Were the people in Tampa? Were the people in Big Bend area of Florida raptured? Were the people in North Carolina raptured out? No, they're still here. They're suffering right now. They're living their own apocalypse. They're living in their own tribulation. Maybe some of them prepared, but they their home was in a valley that got flooded, folks. I'm not trying to make fun of the situation. I'm just telling you that most people don't think that anything bad is going to happen to them. They buy the biggest house that they can afford. They buy a fancy new car with car payments of seven, eight hundred dollars a month. But they won't invest in a fifteen dollar life straw for their family members. They'll spend hundreds of dollars on a car payment, hundreds of dollars on an insurance payment for their car, three or four thousand dollars for a house payment, but they won't even go out and buy a fifteen dollar life straw, a water filter for their house, a extra water tank to put in their backyard because they think nothing bad is going to happen. The government will not save you. You're going to be on your own. 
the government doesn't have the resources to save you. They really don't, folks. The government is good at spending your taxpayer money, though. They'll send $200 billion to Ukraine. They'll send billions to Israel for another war so the defense contractors can make billions more money. Folks, we're one of the very few YouTube channels that are telling you the truth. And, you know, I would take up an offering for the people in Asheville, but I don't want people to accuse me of stealing the money because there are so many people, uh, if you did that, well, he's just doing that so he can enrich his own self, that all the money that I raise goes into my own bank account. That's what people would say. That's why I haven't started a GoFundMe for people in Asheville because I don't want people accusing me of, oh, he's just doing it. Uh, he's a scam artist. He's a grifter. He's just using that Asheville situation to make himself thousands of dollars. That's why I haven't done it. I'm going to leave that for other people. But I do want to give you an opportunity right now, folks. There is one family that you can help. And I want to show you a video. But before we do, I want to give you an opportunity. Do you know Jesus Christ? If you died today, would you go to heaven? Do you know you would go to heaven? If you cannot say yes to that question, I'm going to lead you on a prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. There's only one way to heaven, folks. That's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Those people in Asheville and other parts like Cedar Key, Florida, like Tampa Bay, all the people that died in this Hurricane Helene, they didn't think that they would die. Their families didn't think that they would die. They didn't think that their house would be destroyed. They didn't think that they would lose everything. Death comes suddenly. You're not going to get a warning. 95,000 people lived in Asheville. The entire city was almost flooded. All of it, all of it was almost flooded. There were some areas that were spared, but most of Asheville was underwater. We don't know what happened to the 95,000. Yes, there are survivors. We've seen the videos. There are thousands of survivors, but I believe that there are thousands of people that perished maybe even tens of thousands. We will never know. But uh, if those people that died did not know Jesus Christ, they are burning in hell right now. They're burning in hell. If they did not know Jesus Christ. Folks, I don't want anyone going to hell. That's why we do these broadcasts. Because you do not know the day that you're going to die. You don't know. It could be today, tomorrow, next year. Ten years from now, you could live out of your life and die of old age. No one knows the day that they're going to die. But we're here to prepare you for when that day comes. Do you know right now that you would go to heaven? If you cannot say yes to that question, you need to bow your head. Repent of your sins and Jesus Christ will save you right now. Just say, dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, Lord. And I ask you right now to forgive me of all of my sins and wash them away with your precious blood. I do believe that you are the Son of God. And I do believe that you died on that cross and you shed your blood for me. And you rose again the third day. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving all of my sins. And thank you, Jesus, for giving me eternal life. Amen. If you said that prayer, you are saved and you are born again. No one can take you out of God's hands. But folks, it is time for the Christian to take up his cross daily, to go out into all the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ before the world and get as many people saved as possible because someday, Someday it's going to happen in your community. Someday the lights will go out. Someday there will not be any more internet, no more cell phones. You won't be able to do what God has called you to do right now. Evangelize your city. Evangelize your town. Evangelize your Walmart. 
whatever area that you live in in the United States, get out and do what Jesus calls us to do. Take the gospel to a hurting and dying world. Because time is growing shorter and shorter and shorter. The door is about to shut. Things are being wrapped up biblically. This is a biblical event that is unfolding right now. 40 trillion gallons of rain, of water that hit the area. 40 trillion gallons in a matter of hours. So, folks, thank you for watching our channel. You know, Jesus said to help the widow, the orphan, and the stranger. That's what the Bible tells us to do. To help the helpless, the people that cannot help themselves. I wish I could help the people of Asheville. There are multiple agencies now raising money. I don't know where the money's going to go, but I want to show you one family that you can help. We've known these people for quite a while. The woman is paralyzed from the waist down. She is in a wheelchair. They basically live in their van. They're on a limited income. They do not have enough money to rent an apartment. They're on a limited income. The apartment rent across the United States is so bad that most people cannot even afford a one bedroom apartment. You got to pay first and last month's rent. You got to pay a security deposit. You got to go through a credit check. You got to have income to buy your food and insurance. There's a lot of people just like these, but I don't know those. I know these people right here. And I can vouch 100% that what they are saying is true. This is Bob and Jackie. Jackie was paralyzed many years ago. She is in a wheelchair. Her legs are paralyzed. Bob is her husband. He's been taking care of her for a long time. They basically live in their van. They need to raise money so they can go across the United States and rent a, a single wide trailer. They don't have the money for gas. He hurt his back taking care of Jackie. They had a plan. They moved to Idaho and bought a travel trailer, and they were going to live in it over the wintertime. He was going to put a small wood stove in the travel trailer, but he hurt his back. He couldn't lift. He's been in agony for months with a bad back, and he's having to take care of his wife that's in a wheelchair. So they did find a place, I believe, in another state, but they don't have the gas money to drive out there, folks. Let's come together as caring Americans and help these people raise enough gas money. I don't know how much they need, maybe $1,000 to pay for gas and motels till they get to this new location, that they found a place that they can live, and the owners is going to let them move in, but they need to get there first. Let's help these people, somebody that we can physically see and we know their story. Let's help them at least help one person so they don't have to live in their van. She's in a wheelchair, folks. He's got a bad back, probably from lifting her in and out of that wheelchair for the last 10 years because she can't do it herself. She's got to be physically picked up and taken to the bathroom or taken to the shower or put on the couch. And over a period of years, that will wear your back out, folks. So let me show you the video. Let me get this on the screen. If I can find it. I want to show you, this is a video from Bob. Um, Now, they do have a YouTube channel, and you can go to their YouTube channel and hear their story. We have tried to help them in the past, but folks, you know, the Bible says if you see somebody, if you see somebody and do not help, then what good are we 
if we are Christians and we see somebody on the side of the road, they're wounded, they're bleeding, and we just walk by and we say, thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers, bless you, my brother, bless you, my brother, in the name of Jesus, and you continue to walk and you don't help that poor person. Folks, I'm bringing you just one story out of millions and millions of stories in the United States. I can't help everybody. We can only help just certain people. But if God leads you, plus let's raise enough money for Bob and Jackie to drive across, I believe this is Kentucky, where they're going, to this mobile home where they can at least live and not live in their van. Let's help these poor people raise enough money, gas money, for motels and food while they go to their new location, folks. Whatever you can do, I know God will bless you. So let me get this on the screen. I'm going to mute my mic now, and I want you to listen to Bob. This is his story of what they are going through right now. And if God leads you, please help. Hey, brothers and sisters, this is Bob here with Bob and Jackie, and I hope you are all having a blessed evening and a blessed day, depending on when you see this. Um, it's good to talk to you all, and uh, we pray that Jesus is blessing you uh, physically and spiritually uh, in these very interesting times that we're in right now. Um, I thought I'd come on for a short bit and give you an update and kind of let you know where we're at and first kind of excuse how I'm a little unkept here I have not been doing well body wise and it's been difficult to even try to keep up with things here so I pray for your forgiveness on that um, you know many of you know that uh, we had come up here to the North Idaho area um, and got a small used trailer to the plan was to redo some things on the inside it's an older trailer um you know make it more fit for jackie getting in and out and um to set up the wood stove that we have uh, it's a small wood stove but would heat this place very well um but about four or five days after we arrived here and got the trailer to the RV site, my back has completely gone blitzkrieg. Um, you know, I always have pain and problems, but I had no idea what was ahead after I got here. This is um, a big disappointing surprise. Um, the only thing I had done here was... Uh, get pull the refrigerator out which is a small fridge so it wasn't heavy and just kind of let it out onto the ground and uh, put a piece of plywood to make the bed larger in the back nothing nothing unusually strenuous and uh, my back went into an attack of pain so bad that um, that lasted for eight weeks um, of absolute agony and we kept waiting and waiting and for it to let up ease up and i know all the problems i have in my back um, and they're multitudinous and uh, i was not expecting it to get like this and part of the plan here was you know to get enough wood delivered and um you know that's already cut into a certain sizes and then i could reduce them kind of in half for the little wood stove we have well it's so bad guys that there's no way i i can't sit even without at least two pain pills in me and then i can't get rid of all the pain and at times i can still barely do anything so as you know we're tomorrow we're going into october and it will be getting it's already getting into the low 30s on some nights and it's it's 
it starts dropping pretty quick in September, October. And up here, there's just no way we're going to be able to uh, survive. And, you know, I know it's, it's my blessed and happy duty to look out for Jackie. And excuse my voice, guys, I've had a horrible allergies that's turned into a terrible chest cold. And I have been hacking and coughing like crazy. And I've got some Dayquil, Nyquil, Delsum, and cough drops and that. So I'm, uh, it's been about a full week of the worst cough I think I've ever had. But uh, it's starting to get into the a little better territory finally. Um, there's just no way we can stay here. We have tried to look for a place, you know, in our area up here. And, you know, just a studio or, you know, maybe a small little mobile, you know, electric water, heat and all that. And, you know, it's in these days, um, it's just gone through the roof. You know, that some of the people want first, last, you know, uh, and a deposit, you know, three times the rent. And, um, others are, you know, most of them are just too much money. And... Uh, some of them with Jackie's wheelchair, you can't get in the front door because of just too many steps to even do a ramp or something. Um, and then, of course, you know, a small ramp we can do on our own, but, um, you know, with a piece of wood. But uh, if it gets too much to overcome, it's too much for my back, too dangerous. So there's, you know, or can she get in the restroom or that? So um, there's some challenges that we have to be able to. Uh, overcome and we've got enough money to survive each month coming in we barely make it each month but we we do it and um it's 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 a challenge out there right now for anybody trying to rent and we know everybody's dealing with a lot right now we feel you we really feel you um there's no signs uh, that this is going to relent. It started to get the back issue. It started to, the pain was dropping down a little bit for, oh, I don't know, seven, eight, nine days. And in just one day, for no reason, it just, boom, came right back full-fledged. And I'm, I'm back in that situation again of um, horrific pain. So... We've been looking and looking and looking, and Jackie's been putting in tons of hours looking, and um, she found this place. And, you know, when you can't find a place in your area, it's, you know, for us, the trailer idea here and everything, we only had to pay our space rent. But up here to rent apartments and stuff, it's not the cheapest place. And so we started looking in Oklahoma. Arkansas, which are much more affordable uh, states, you know, cost of living in that, and good states, you know, where people like us are more welcome with, uh, you know, people who uh, believe in Jesus and things like that. And, uh, and Jackie had uh, looked in a couple areas also, trying to find something, which for the specifics of what we need with her chair and these things uh, makes it a lot harder and so she found this uh little mobile it's a single wide um it's a one bedroom and it is as clean as a whistle it's got uh, everything we need and um, it's even got some furniture in it already uh, absolutely perfect and it's in kentucky so it's kind of a miracle how this came about. It, it really is just a miracle. Uh, it, this was God. You guys, probably most of you know what it's like trying to rent. Uh, you know, all the the checks that they do. You know, they got to like you. Um, you know, and you're competing with other people. Well, so we found it late at night. So in the morning, we made sure we were ready to call in the morning and we uh so we, we dialed the number and well the man answered and one of the things that we and jackie can't figure out 
is why there are so many people you leave a wonderful message on their voicemail you don't hear back from them at all nothing you know if it's on facebook they don't message if it's craigslist they don't message you know even if it's through facebook messaging or craigslist or if they leave a number and you call and leave a message 65 percent you don't hear anything it's it's really amazing you know and then you, some of them you find it well they already rented it um or some you just never know what happened you just never hear anything so it's a we're it's a very strange thing um so this gentleman actually answered the phone and so we started talking and he seemed like he's a, a wonderful caring man and this place is um he owns it and he's a very caring person um loves the country um it's him and his wife so what's interesting is he won't do anything without his wife's approval well as it turns out she was right there for the phone call and so long story longer um they liked us so much they were like well god you guys sound just like the kind of people that we would want to rent our place because it's really they've really done it nice and they're kind of careful on who they rent to um they'd like it to be someone that they feel comfortable with and uh, you know especially it's on property they own that um kind of like-minded people and well before the call was over um he decided he said i want to rent to you guys i mean without going anything further to look into to check um he decided to rent to us and guys we are so happy um Jesus is so good to us. The, here's the tough news is it's from here to where this place is. And it'll be down, you know, Kentucky. So it's a lot more Southern. We're up here 59 miles from the Canadian border. Um, but it's a, a 2300 mile drive to get there. So we have tried to get rid of on and off over the last several weeks whenever i can even move go through a few things and get rid of a few things to you know lighten the load and make things as easy as possible it's an older van uh you know it runs good but it's an older van so we got to take it easy on it and um gas is not cheap and so we had to leave them a little, little partial deposit um but we don't have enough to complete, you know, they want first in a deposit. So that's another good thing is they only want first in a, in a deposit of the same amount. They don't want first, last in a deposit. So there's another blessing. And so we don't have all of the money to give them when we get there. We figure we'll be, we're just stepping out in faith, guys. Um, we don't know the way this place came about that jesus is there and that he's going to make a way where there seems to be no way and i had a dream about a week ago and in the dream it was just me and jackie and it was all surrounded with this like kind of white fog and it was me telling jackie and i had just turned looking upwards and god i knew god was speaking to me he wasn't physically there, but I knew he had been the one speaking to me and that I was to tell Jackie that we, me and her, were to pray to him to make the impossible possible. And so I told her in the morning about the dream and it was that was all the dream was just out of the blue. There it was. Um, and as soon as I was done telling her, it was over. Um, and so we're stepping out of faith. You know, if we were to stay here, you know, another Yeah, we have to have the rest of this money by the 3rd. Thank you, hon. So we're stepping out of faith as we go here, guys, because if we can't do both because if we stay here, you know, past the 3rd 
we'll only have to pay the guy for the space here prorate it for three days but we can't pay for another month here certainly and then try and get the place and go to kentucky that's impossible so we only have about three days to uh, to have this to this wonderful couple that we're renting the place from and it they seem to be the the warmest kindest people that would be our landlord that we've had and um so we're thankful and excited about it um and we're going to need some money for gas and some motels um, i've been known sometimes to drive through the night just to save you know a night's motel but i know that sooner or later we got to stop to be safe um, so guys we're asking everybody you know we in our own lives and i know you guys in your lives especially so many of you are going through so many things right now it's not just us um, have seen god move mountains through prayer sincere fervent prayer so we just humbly ask that you would keep us in prayer and ask for god to send financial help because my using my body to do anything anymore is done um that's the end of the story it's been kind of ending for a while but it's it's a done deal now so i'm like just god help me i don't even know really how i'm gonna do this um we don't really have a lot of stuff um but what we do have still has to go into the van luckily there is some already in there but just the, what we have left is going to be a, a, a real challenge. So um, if you pray for God to hold my body up that I can get through this um, and for safety as we drive and for God to send. Unfortunately, we hate to do this video to ask, but we're kind of at God's mercy and everybody is mercy. Um, this was unexpected. And the last thing I wanted to do is be any kind of a burden to anybody. So. Um, guys, we're so grateful just for caring. Um, we're two people who are at this point in our lives have learned. We're so grateful for our brothers and sisters in Christ that love us. We can't thank you enough for your prayers, for the help that, that you've given to get us just to this far with what we've been dealing with. Our hearts can't even begin to describe to you, um, just how thankful we are and how great our jesus is so i pray this video finds you well um, we'll leave some links below the video and guys we know how tough times are so for those who can pray just pray and for those who the holy spirit leads um, we pray that perhaps you consider helping um, this will be the last uh, i can go no more and I uh, can't do anything more with um, God has um, told me it's exit visa time on using the body. So um, we, I speak for both of us. We say we love you all. We're grateful to you. We're so thankful just to have fellowship with you guys. Uh, we uplift each other. And um, we'll be praying for you also. And anybody who's got any prayer needs, we certainly understand prayer needs so please feel free in the comments to send prayer requests for yourselves for loved ones um, and we actually stop doing what we're doing join hands and go to work praying for your prayer requests and uh, we pray for the same uh, god bless you all thank you for watching listening and may jesus bless you greatly So I wanted to show you uh, their YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Last Stand on YouTube. You can hear their story um, on YouTube. I know a lot of people are wary about giving, but folks, we've known these people for many, many years. This is Jackie uh, right here. This is her story.
She died in a wreck and saw Jesus. She is paralyzed. Uh, like I said, this is um, this is her story. Um, you know what happened to her. I'm not going to play another video, but I just want to show her, uh, show you. This is Jackie. She is paralyzed from the waist down. Um, you know they don't have any hope, folks. So I want to ask you to do what Jesus told us to do. And first, please pray for Bob, his back, that God will miraculously heal his back so he will be able to drive 2,200 miles. Folks, if you've ever been on a long trip, you know, more than five or six hours, it does hurt your back. You know, it, it, is, um, it is very hard on your body to drive a long trip. You have to stop and get out and stretch your back and, you know, stretch your legs. So pray, number one that God will miraculously heal Bob's back so he'll be able to drive. Let's pray for Jackie that they'll be able to load their van and be able to make it to Kentucky to their new home. Folks, you know, we can't help everybody. We can't help the people in North Carolina. There are other major organizations raising money to help them. I don't know the people personally. I would not know how to raise money or even distribute it to the people in North Carolina. But I do know these people here. I do know that they're basically homeless. They have an old van. She's in a wheelchair, paralyzed. He's got a hurt back. He cannot work anymore. And it is our duty as a Christian, if you see someone in need, to help. This money's not going toward me, folks. I'm, I'm not getting any penny off of this. We're doing this to help, to show the love of God, to help just one family. And I can vouch for these people because I've been helping them myself for many years. We have done uh, other fundraisers for them. But, you know, when I see somebody in need, folks, if God has blessed you, he's blessed you for a reason, not to go out and buy yourself a Maserati or a million dollar home. He's blessed you so you can help other people like this that cannot help themselves. They, they are in a dire situation. So please go to their channel. Um, let me go back here. But this is their YouTube channel. They've got a lot of videos. I will leave their link in the description box. The name of their channel is Last Stand. They have 207 video. Uh, I'm sorry. 207 subscribers, 56 videos. You can hear their story. But um, I did want to share their video here. And uh, I did want to show you their link. Um, let me see if I can get it on the screen. So I will leave their PayPal link. Um, hopefully you can see this on the screen right now. Um, Actually, let me let me go back and show you. But I want to give you their PayPal link, and we will leave all of the links under this video. If God leads you, please help Jackie and Bob, folks. Please help them. You know, we have on the average of 6,000 to 20,000 people that have been watching our videos. 6,000 minimum to 20,000 people that view our videos every day. If everybody could give a quarter or 50 cents or maybe a dollar to help these people, we could raise enough money in a few hours to help them pay for their lot rent, help them pay for their rental for this trailer, help them with a the motel bill and the gas bill. If everybody just gave a dollar, folks, one dollar, if 6,000 people gave $1, they would have plenty of money to go on the trip, pay for their motel, and even pay for a couple months rent on this trailer in Kentucky. And maybe Bob could get some medical care. Maybe he could go to a chiropractor, folks. We cannot help everybody. I can't help everybody. But the people that we bring before you, they need your help. If God has blessed you, please help them, folks. If God's blessed you and you have more than enough, if your family is taken care of, please 
help them on PayPal. Give them a dollar if that's all you can afford. One dollar. If everybody gave a dollar, folks, I'm not talking about a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or five thousand dollars. I'm talking about one dollar, not even the price of a 7 Eleven soda, a big gulp, or a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Help them, please. If you do it unto the least of these, you do it unto me. That's what Jesus said. If you do it unto the least of these, let's help this family. They're basically homeless. There are millions and millions of stories just like Bob and Jackie. I can't help those people. I don't know them. But I do know these people right here. We can help the people that God brings in front of us. So thank you for watching. Like I said, if God leads you, this is Bob and Jackie's PayPal. I will leave all of that information in the section. I'm not asking for money for me. This money is not going to me. It's going to them so they can get to Kentucky and not be homeless. Folks, he's got a hurt back. He can't work anymore. He's been in constant pain for the last five months, basically longer than that. She's in a wheelchair. She's paralyzed. Imagine yourself being homeless with somebody that's paralyzed in a wheelchair and you have to lift them in and out to go to the bathroom, to go to bed, to do anything. That's why Bob's back is messed up. He needs some medical care. He needs maybe to go to a chiropractor to get some, some help from a chiropractor to maybe help straighten out his back. But folks, like I said, pray to God. If all you can do is a dollar, then give them a dollar. But we have enough people that watch our channel. We've got over 15,000 people now that watch our channel. There's enough people on our channel, good Christian people, that can help these people get to Kentucky to be able to get to this new mobile home or use mobile homes that they can have a place where Jackie could lay down in a bed and Bob wouldn't have to worry about being homeless in a van in Idaho during the winter. So God bless you. Thank you for watching our channel. Please share our videos out, folks. We're only here to help you. We're here to help you. We're here to bring you the breaking news, to inform you what is going on, and to also make sure that you don't go to hell. That's our main goal here, is that no one that watches our channel will go to hell because we give you the gospel of Jesus Christ. So God bless you. Remember, Jesus Christ loves you. He's coming back soon. Don't be caught dead without him. Bye-bye.